eabreadyampreparegear.com. Here we have an Americhon 811H I went through repaired. So, I first uh, had to replace the plate choke, so I had to take this whole assembly out. You always want to mark this shaft really well. So I put it here. You can see I marked it there, here, on the shaft, and the back wall. There's no detent on this. There's no detent lever thing like like this rotor switch has. It locks it into each position. So when you take the shaft out to get this assembly out, if you don't have it in the right spot, that's the input rotary switch, it won't line up properly and you'll have an infinite SWR um, on the band that you're trying to operate on. So after it's marked, Loosen these two uh, screws, these full screws for the coupler. Slide it back, carefully get that out. Carefully, because that's plastic, it'll break. You don't want to put any pressure on it. Flip it on its side. Remove the screw for the output safety choke. And then the screws for the standoffs between this piece and the chassis. And then you have to unsolder the filament leads from underneath. Or you could go, or you can unsolder it from the board. I like doing it right from the bottom of the tube sockets where they, the two wires connect. All the tubes are in parallel, so they're two wires that solder to where they're connected to each other. I took the grid loading resistors out, and I grounded each grid directly to ground. There's one grid connection per tube. I used the solder tab and uh, drilled four holes and. Use a 632 screw with a cap nut. Kept the path nice and short. You don't want to go through the screws. Bad idea. I put gas caps in. I didn't do the 200 ohm resistor mod. That's not needed. You know, the uh, gas caps were probably not even needed for the 572s. You know, if you had like good RCA tubes or something, you don't have to worry about any of that. But, you know, I have a whole bunch. So I put the gas caps in. And the reason for that is, you know, if you had an 811 and it flashed from plate to the filament, you could end up damaging the transceiver. So if you have the gas cap in, they'll flash and they'll bring it to ground so you don't damage the transceiver. <clears throat> the 200 ohm resistor, so you know, uh, with an 811, if it's making a slight arc noise, it's supposed to help with getting rid of the noise in the receiver, but that lowers the gain of the amplifier, so you end up needing more drive in the process. So that's not needed here. I didn't put that in. So put the new parasitic suppressor board in. These are brand new Penta Laboratory tubes. Awesome company. Put in new filter caps. I put in new bleeder slash equalization resistors. Whenever you change the filter caps, you have to change these resistors. If one of these opens up, you can end up losing the cap because all these are in series and these equalize the voltage across each cap. So change the resistors and the caps at, at the same time. I cleaned the rotary switches. Checked everything else out. Checked the input S uh, the input and the output SO two thirty nines. And now this thing is good to go. The website's ampreparegear.com, 203-892-4119. Without that 200 ohm resistor in there, this thing, like about 50 something watts in, gets the full 800 PP out. <clears throat> Great amp. You know, I won't even work on these if, if the person doesn't want to put 572s in. The 811 just have so many problems. I don't even touch 811s anymore. Any amp that uses that that's going to have the 811 chinese tube in it so these are direct drop and replacement so take care have a great day once again amprepairguy.com 203-892-4119